You know, severe burn survivors have some horrific days of painful healing ahead of them. But in the end, emotional healing could very well be the hardest part. This week is Burn Awareness Week, and J.R. Martinez is on a mission. At 10 years old, I joined this brotherhood, and I joined this brotherhood of, of kids that one day dream of being a professional athlete. That's what I wanted to do. So I was born in Louisiana. Father left when I was nine months old, raised by a single woman. Were it's you been, an athlete? In I was an athlete. I played, I played football. Well, I go and visit this Division II school, West Georgia. One of my sisters passed away from an illness that she was born with when I was three. And they tell me, as, after they look at everything, they say, oh, you can actually come to college here, but unfortunately, you won't be able to play sports for two years. My mother in the mix of trying to find, you know, uh, uh, a partner for, you know, for herself, unfortunately fell into becoming like a victim of domestic abuse. Senior year started. Played that season and it was it was amazing. I mean, I, I I was not 100%, but I was able to go out to the field every Friday night. You know, I was kind of trying to figure out what I was going to do, and you know, as you know, 9/11 happened a few months before. Mm -hmm. I graduated from high school in May of 2002, and I'm sitting around the house during the summer, thinking to myself, what am I going to do with my life? What's the next step for me? I have no idea. And all of a sudden, as Jack mentioned, I see an option present itself. I came to my mother and I remember walking into the house and I was like, Mom, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And here she is, she's excited because she sees me excited and she says, what is it? And I give her the envelope and I say, I'm going to join the United States Army. So I joined as an infantryman to basic training Fort Benning, Georgia, was there for three months. So here I was escorting this convoy, driving and then driving this Humvee passenger, gentleman sitting behind him someone manning the, the weapon on top of the Humvee, a gunner. Now we started driving and I remember looking at my sergeant because all of us were joking about something in the truck and I was looking at him and I was laughing and then I looked back at the road to look at exactly, you know, what, what was going on in front of me as, as a driver should. And I remember looking at him and laughing again and again and again and all of a sudden I turned to look at the road when all of a sudden, boom! He was trapped inside of the Humvee, immediately exploded, other three guys thrown out of the vehicle. And in the mix of when the other guys, when the other vehicles were getting out to try to find these other guys and, and get everybody together and to make sure everybody's okay, they said, where's Martinez? Where's Martinez? We're missing Martinez. Martinez is trapped inside of the Humvee in the driver's seat and he can't get out and the truck is now engulfed in flames. How did you get out of the damn car? So two of my sergeants, after five minutes, pulled me out. I spoke with the Army vet who was buried over 40% of his body by an exploding IED in Iraq. 24% of that was third degree, 10% of that was second degree. But then the once handsome 19 year old had to confront himself in the mirror. The first time I seen my face it was a, it was pretty hard. Um, the doctors didn't want to let me do it yet but I, I, I said I gotta get strong and I gotta learn how to deal with it. After two weeks my mom came into my room and she said you have a lot of things to learn in life, JR, but the one thing that you're going to learn is that no matter who's in your life, for whatever reason, they're going to be in your life for who you are as a person and not what you look like. He'd been seriously wounded, but David tells us he's made an incredible recovery. You have the ability and the power to make an amazing impact on somebody's life. You have done it already, continue to do it, and know and trust and believe that what you do every single day, it's paying off. And even though you don't see the reward now, you have to go home and understand that. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself first, and if you do that, you're able to take care of everybody else that comes into your clinic.